Hello everyone and welcome to the breaks episode for the F1 2019 setup series. So now we've cleared suspension, I feel like the rest of the series really isn't going to be too complicated but it's still worth a watch just to see if you haven't missed anything out. Uh, so we're going to be looking at fuel, tyres but for now this episode we're looking at brakes so let's get on with it. Now I'd be concerned if you didn't know what the brakes do, especially if you have a driving licence, that is slightly concerning. But what the brakes do is slow the car down, so they do this with a series of components. You've got the brake pads, the brake discs, the brake lines, the brake fluid, and finally the brake pedal, which is obviously operated by yourself, the driver. And in F1 2019, there's only two things you can change regarding the brakes. So you've obviously got the brake pressure, which is the amount of pressure needed before the car actually starts using the brake pads and the brake bias, where the brake bias is basically the balance of the brakes being distributed to each wheel. So it's differentiated by the front axle and the rear axle. So you have a front brake bias and a rear brake bias as well. And as you can see, we're in the lobby now. We're using Monza as the example track, simply because Monza is so fast. There's a lot of heavy braking zones, especially turn one, which we're going to use quite a lot. It's like a case study corner. So I've loaded my test brake setup. What we're going to try first is the brake pressure. We're going to run that to the minimum value. So we're going to run it at 50%. So in theory, braking should be very, very difficult. So let's go and see if that's true. So as you can see, going down the main straight, braking straight after the 150 meter board, and I'm slamming on the brakes and nothing happens. It's just not hard enough. And that was always going to be the case. It's probably a stupid test, but it just confirms what the brake pressure does. Uh, we'll go and do the maximum now and see if it's any different. And of course, going down the same straight, braking at the same point, same brake pressure in terms of the amount I'm putting on the pedal, and we lock up and then we again run wide. So, I mean, that was always as I say, gonna happen, but it's just good to show you guys what it does in its exaggerated form. So if you're locking up a little bit, maybe go back on the brake pressure. And if you're not locking up enough, i.e. you're struggling to stop for the corners, then push the brake pressure up a little bit. So what I usually do for my Fanatec V3 pedals, I usually run the brake pressure at around 85% at all tracks. So I always run the same brake pressure at every track for consistency in the brake pedal. But you will change the brake pressure depending on the pedal set you have. For example, on my CSL Elite pedals with the load cell and the 80 five kilo bungs or washers I run 89% to 90% brake pressure so it just feels different and if you use the theory like we've shown you correctly then no matter what pedal set you have you'll always have the right brake pressure now then onto the brake bias it doesn't really matter too much what you set the brake bias to in the pits because you're going to be moving it about when you're on the track anyway you may have noticed that from my hot lap series I don't really talk about the brake bias too much in the setups but as you can see on this qualifying lap, for turn one we're at 56% and then at turn four we flick it down to 54%. For the Lesmos it goes into 52% and then Ascari we're back up to 54 and then for Parabolica we're back up to 54 So that's quite a lot of change over the course of one lap and it's just for that feeling. So at 56% obviously the brake bias is to the front which means you're going to have more stopping force on the front axle and the rear end is going to be more stable. If you put the brake bias to say 52, the brakes are going to be more strong at the rear compared to how they were earlier, which means it's going to be a lot more stopping force on the rear axle and it's going to be a bit more floaty, a bit more unstable and you do need to take that into account in terms of your driving. But as you can clearly see, it's very important to get the right brake bias for the right type of corner. But what I would say though in terms of the threshold you want to work between is that 58% is probably the most you want the brakes to go forward and 52 is the most you want it to go backwards. So that 52 and 58, that's like the margin you want to play within. Now then, you've seen how the brake bias changes throughout a quali lap into the race for even on part firmer conditions you can change the brake bias but you can't change the brake pressure so you want to make sure that's right before going into the race of course and a few things to note in the race i mean as the stink gets longer and longer your tires get more warm more heated what you can do to try and stop the rears overheating so much is push the brake bias two percent more forward than you usually would run it. So say if you were at 56% for turn one, 54% for turn four, you'd go 2% more. So you'd go 58% for turn one and then 56% for turn four. What that does is just put the brakes onto the front axle a bit more, takes it off the rear and it will save your tires heat and wear a little bit. So as you can see in this simulation race, what I'm doing is pitting at the end of lap four and you can see I put the brake bias down to 50% before coming into the pits. And the reason for that is when we rejoin, uh, when the brake bias is all the way to the rear, and that is all the way to the rear on F1 2019, 50%. When you come out the pitch, if you do a few corners with 50% brake bias, your tyres at the rear will heat up quicker, which means your tyres will be on temperature a lot quicker than they would otherwise. And that's a little bit of an advantage you can carry forward in any league race against your opponents. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will try and do that now. It doesn't make a huge difference, it makes a little difference. But these little differences can make big results. So 
You can't do this at every track. Some tracks are generally too hot to do this, but there are some tracks where it's a bit cooler. There's a harder compound of soft tyre and you can get away with it and it does help you as well. So just make sure you're not overheating the tyres too much and you're doing it at the right tracks. But it is a good tip you can carry forward. Just make sure you put the brake bias values up where they were before, otherwise your rear tyres are going to overheat very, very quickly. And that is the end of the brake episode. As usual, in the description below, I'll leave my settings for a couple of different pedal sets for the brake pressure, the brake bias, I'm sure you can work out on your own. I've already given you the margins to work within. And in the next episode, we're going to cover tyres. But until that next episode, it's goodbye from me, and I'll see you on the next one.